uh, we would not uh, uh, teaching uh, chapter 4 you can uh, see the Jeff Offut uh, videos at its homepage for uh, chapter 4 if you want uh, there is no necessity uh, that uh, you should uh, see chapter 4 but if you uh, you are passionate you could uh, uh, see the chapter, uh, the chapter 4 uh, video materials from the home page of uh, our textbook and uh, we continue our teaching from chapter 5 as you see uh, chapter 5 uh, is explained uh, by Professor Jeff Afroot again and uh, you could uh, see these video materials for more uh, elaboration for more uh, details for um, uh, receive uh, a more fluent teaching by uh, him and uh, let me start chapter 5 and explain uh, the most important concepts um, contained uh, in these slides uh, but uh, you can see the video materials I emphasize uh, that you uh, see uh, the video materials of uh, Professor Jeff offered for this chapter and uh, uh, my explanation uh, probably is not enough for you so you could uh, study your book for chapter 5 uh, and uh, you see the video materials the provided video materials uh, so let me start my speaking on chapter 5 specifically uh, this is like titled changing notions of testing uh, how the notions of testing changed over uh, years ago uh, as you know in uh, uh, your undergraduate uh, software engineering course probably uh, you study about uh, how tests are done in each phase of uh, software de development life cycle so uh, a few years ago uh, or for many years ago uh, there are notions that uh, we should test our products uh, at each phase uh, separately so old view focused on testing at, soft, at each software development phase has been very different from uh, other phases such as uh, these phases as you know uh, and, uh, detect the uh, testing method uh, such as unit testing, uh, module testing, in, uh, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Each of these uh, testing uh, methods uh, is used in a separate phase of uh, software testing in traditional method. Uh, and uh, probably different people want to uh, test uh, our products at different uh, phases so uh, probably uh, uh, there are no people uh, to want to do uh, all tests in all phases uh, but uh, the new view of testing is uh, of software testing is different 
because uh, the new view of uh, testing is uh, focused on the focused on uh, how uh, we can uh, uh, determine how we can uh, detect uh, effective tests automatically based on some uh, testing tools and uh, as you know as I told in chapter 2 uh, in the new notions of uh, testing uh, we should use uh, coverage criteria to generate our test cases and uh, as you know uh, there are dozens of uh, coverage criteria uh, that all of them are based on some uh, structures uh, of my uh, source of program or other uh, documentations um, so as uh, I said in uh, chapter 2 uh, there are four structures to defining coverage criteria uh, which include uh, input space modeling graphs uh, which uh, include uh, control flow graph, data flow graph uh, UML diagrams such as activity di uh, diagrams such as state chart di diagram which uses graphs to uh, explain the behavior uh, of our uh, product or uh, use uh, some other uh, graph uh, grammar such as Petrinet, such as uh, graph transformation system to uh, specify the behavior of uh, the product and it could be they could be used as a source of uh, testing sort of source of testing process and we could define uh, appropriate coverage criteria uh, specifically for those structures uh, another uh, other uh, structures that could be used um, for defining uh, uh, coverage criteria for uh, software testing as I told about it in uh, previous chapters are uh, logical experiments uh, which is used in uh, conditional statements of our uh, programs and uh, also they could be used uh, as a guard of uh, state machine models uh, such as finite state machines or transition systems uh, or the other uh, the last a structure that could be used uh, for uh, defining coverage criteria for uh, test design is a syntax structure which uh, includes uh, all uh, structures uh, that we uh, could use in our programs uh, so uh, test design uh, uh, in this uh, new notion, new view uh, is uh, different from the uh, old view, from the uh, traditional view which uh, used separate peoples for separate phases, uh, phases of uh, software development life cycle to test our products in that phases. In this uh, new notion, uh, we use uh, these structures to define some coverage criteria and based on this uh, coverage, those coverage criteria we could uh, determine several uh, or sets of uh, test requirements and uh, we should uh, uh, propose some methods to cover those requirements and if uh, they are not dependent uh, on what phase of software development what uh, uh, phase of the software development let's say 
Okay. They are uh, independent from the phases of software development because we use the structures such as graph, we can extract graph from source code, we can extra, extra, uh, extract, we can use some uh, UML diagrams such as uh, activity diagram or state chart diagram which are uh, designed beforehand the coding of uh, the system or before and the implementation phase. So in uh, both of these uh, sources, uh, we could uh, use uh, some criteria based on graphs uh, or graph parameters uh, to determine uh, test requirements. So in new notion, in new view, uh, we act uh, independent uh, of uh, the phase of uh, development, let's say so. And in all phases, we, uh, we can use, uh, for example, a graph coverage, and when we use a graph-based coverage uh, criteria, uh, we use probably the same uh, algorithm, the same method to design tests for all phases, because we work on graphs and uh, it's not matter that uh, which uh, that graph uh, was generated in uh, implementation phase or generated in design phase or other phases of software development. So this design is a large, uh, largely the same at each phase because we work on some coverage criteria and some test requirement in. Uh, this activity. So the, it's not matter that uh, this criteria or these uh, uh, requirements generated from which of uh, phases, from what phase of software testing. Uh, so uh, the different things in uh, in these phases of uh, software development uh, are uh, creating the model is different. The creating the model in implementation uh, phase uh, is based on, uh, uh, for example, control flow graph or data flow graph, but in uh, design phase or in uh, system testing in integration phase, we could uh, generate differently. So, uh, what is different uh, in new notion, the way of creating our models as a basics of uh, test design. And uh, after that, uh, it's not important we are in which phase of in what phase of software development so Another difference could be in choosing values and automating the tests could be different. Okay, because when we uh, do, uh, for example, uh, system testing or acceptance testing, uh, we could use uh, some uh, other methods to design uh, our test cases such as uh, uh, methods for uh, used for black box, black box testing uh, or we can use structures such as uh, input do domain partitioning to partition to uh, divide uh, our input domains into uh, subdomains and uh, test each subdomain uh, at least at least once. So the choosing value and automating the tests could be different in different phase, but uh, using of criteria uh, is independent from uh, the phases we are in. As you uh, know about this uh, chart, 
I uh, speak uh, enough about this chart, how uh, we do testing in model-driven test design approach. As you know, uh, we use a software, software artifact as our input, uh, as the input of our uh, test design process, and uh, we extract some model or structures from this software artifact, and by choosing um, a coverage criterion, we uh, extract, we determine our test requirements, and uh, probably uh, in parallel we can use some uh, other approaches uh, such as human-based approach to, to define our test requirements and we can uh, uh, join these two sets and refine them uh, to uh, generate a final set of um, test requirements. So, coverage criteria help us to generate, to detect our test requirements, as you see in chapter 2. And uh, then uh, we should uh, generate our uh, input values. Uh, you have seen uh, how we use input values to test uh, our uh, programs in chapter 3. In chapter 3, uh, you told how uh, we use JUni to uh, test our uh, business code uh, in uh, some test class. We have some test classes uh, and how to generate test methods to use these uh, input values to call business methods and uh, execute them by uh, generated input values from our test design phase. And as you know, uh, in chapter 3, we used uh, some assertion uh, calls uh, to assert, to uh, compare the actual uh, result of uh, method calls, of actual method calls, actual results with expected results and uh, uh, we set the system, we put the system in appropriate state before uh, we call a test method so uh, we need uh, some prefix and postfix values uh, as we talked about them. So uh, the test cases uh, could be prepared by test design activity and then we generate test scripts uh, which uh, could call the methods automatically and run them, execute them and uh, record the results, test results and then evaluate by evaluated by test authors. Uh, so, uh, what about test coverage criteria more precisely, as I defined in uh, chapter 2, and you, you have seen uh, some coverage criteria uh, specifically for control flow graph in chapter 2. Uh, we have seen uh, node coverage and edge coverage and edge pair coverage. Uh, for uh, some concrete examples in chapter 2. Uh, but uh, in this chapter, we want to define more per, uh, precisely uh, the test coverage criteria concept. Uh, then we have a, a, a test coverage criteria uh, to, to define a test coverage criteria, the tester should define a model of the software and then find ways to cover uh, this model. Uh, to do this, 
we should define some coverage criteria as a rule or collection uh, collection of rules that imposes test requirement that defines test requirements for a uh, software artifact so uh, you know that test requirement is a specific element of a software artifact that a test case or our test set must satisfy, must satisfy or cover uh, that element for example the test requirement could uh, be when we use uh, HP coverage the test requirements are, are all of uh, possible edge pairs from my software okay oh excuse me I have no slides Let me see how about have you seen my slide? No. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, let me go back to uh, yeah, explain uh, three slides. Uh, I uh, uh, give you a summary of my, my talking. Uh, as I said, uh, in the old thing, uh, in the traditional testing, we should test the software uh, according to the phases of development, such as design, implementation, deployment, and so on, or uh, doing some uh, testing uh, levels such as unit testing, module testing, integration, system testing, and acceptance testing in appropriate phases, but in new notion of uh, software testing uh, because of uh, using of some uh, mathematical structures such as graph, such as input space modeling, such as logic expression, and these uh, structures uh, are the same in uh, different uh, phases of software development so when we, uh, we can use uh, some barrier and uh, test requirement based on these uh, structures the notion of uh, testing is changed and in new notion, uh, new notion uh, it's important what structures are using and it's not important that uh, the testing is in what level or what phase of software development because uh, there are some mathematical tools uh, named coverage criteria and the coverage criteria we can, um, uh, define some test requirements and uh, we should uh, propose a way to cover those requirements so it's not matter that uh, we are in which phase of development but uh, what is different in this uh, new uh, notion uh, the way of creating the model is diff different in different uh, phases or uh, how to choosing this uh, the values and uh, at automating the tests tests are different in different uh, phases but it's not matter uh, about the test design the generating tests from uh, the uh, cover uh, requirement test requirements uh, and uh, we talked uh, enough about these uh, structures in uh, previous lectures and uh, I think uh, 
not necessary to talking about them again as you know uh, this phase define our uh, design uh, phase of the testing activity the design activity and then uh, uh, we provide some input values for our test cases we could uh, generate our test cases by uh, using the input data the post fix the prefix and expected results of uh, each uh, combinations of our inputs input variables and then we generate test scripts we uh, practice this phase in chapter 3 and uh, you see how test scripts can automatically run our test cases and uh, uh, return the results and uh, the results could be compared with the expected results to uh, check the fail, fail, failures or passing of our tests uh, uh, another slide uh, that we talked about is uh, the test coverage criteria slide which defines uh, some uh, concepts as uh, I told you before uh, they are not uh, new for you we talk about coverage criterion uh, which is defined as a rule or collection of rules that imposes test requirements and the test requirements is a specific element of software artifacts that uh, artifact that test cases must satisfy or cover it. Okay, uh, we have uh, seen some example, uh, some examples for uh, what is test requirements. As uh, you can remember, in chapter two, we use HP HP coverage criteria and we have defined a set of uh, concrete edge pairs from uh, extracted from our control flow graphs as our test requirements and uh, to cover those test requirements uh, we define some test passes to cover all of those test requirements and for each test passes uh, as you know we should uh, define some input value to uh, to meet uh, those passes of execution. Uh, so the, the tester job is simple: define a model of software to defining coverage criteria according to the model and uh, to uh, extract. Uh, test requirement uh, from the model, the structure uh, that is defined mathematically, the behavior of our product, and uh, we extract the test requirements according to our uh, coverage criteria. Uh, as I told before, Testing researchers have defined dozens of criteria, but they are all uh, really just a few criteria, a few structures, uh, which includes four types of structures. Uh, they are um, based on uh, domain analysis, input domain, input uh, space. Um, and the second one is graph structures uh, and we can define control flow graphs, uh, data flow graphs and so on and the other, another is logic based and the last one is uh, syntax based uh, structure that all of them defines all of possible uh, coverage criteria all over the world uh, source of the structures, uh, I told a lot about the source of these structures. These structures can be extracted from lots of uh, software artifacts. 
for example, uh, we've seen that how to extract control flow graph from source code. We can uh, extract data flow graph from uh, source code again, and uh, we can use uh, some UML. Uh, diagrams such as activity diagrams, such as state chart diagram, uh, to define the basic structures that we can uh, design uh, our test cases according to uh, them. Uh, or we can use uh, some other mechanisms such as uh, finite estate machines or so to define uh, graphs for uh, as a, as our uh, <coughs> fundamental structures that defining the behavior software. Uh, another structure, as you know, logic expression, and I told about other structures such as uh, input space and. Uh, syntax based structures and there is no, no no need to at this time to define them again you can refer to our uh, previous lectures uh, to uh, knowing about them uh, at this uh, item we told uh, this is not the same as model based testing uh, be cautious uh, that the model-driven testing is different from model-based testing. In different, in model-based testing, we just use uh, some uh, models which uh, design beforehand the implementation of our product, and we can use those models to uh, define some tests, some tests, uh, some coverage criteria, and according to it, we can design our tests. Cases. But in model-driven test design, uh, we, we use models, we use the structures which extracted probably from source code to rise the uh, abstraction, abstraction level and define some uh, coverage criteria according to those models. And uh, those models, as I told, are different from design models and uh, analysis models or other form of models. Uh, they could be uh, extracted from source code. They are just for raising the level of abstraction uh, to uh, generate uh, more te effective tests. In uh, model-driven test design, the source uh, of model is uh, important, but in model-based testing, the source is explicitly, uh, explicitly not considered uh, a model because we can use our, uh, for example, UML use cases in model-based test design, but uh, in model-driven test design, we are Price the abstraction automatically uh, by some tools, by generating some formal uh, specification of the behavior of the behavior of uh, our uh, software under test. Uh, you know about these four uh, structure we could use. Uh, to define our set of, uh, sets of coverage criteria in test design activity. As you know, in input domain characterization, uh, we have, for example, in a simple method, uh, compute average of three, um, for example, uh, three integer values or some other methods which have parameters and each of them, each of that parameters have a small set as its domain of uh, input values 
such as uh, showed in this uh, case and uh, we have uh, a definitive uh, input space and we could uh, select some uh, combinations of this uh, input space as our test cases. Uh, the second structure is graphs. Uh, you are familiar with graphs enough to uh, this state of our uh, explanation and there is no need to explain more about this. You have seen control flow, how to use control flow graphs, uh, flow graphs uh, to generate test cases. So you are familiar enough with these structures uh, in chapter 6. Uh, we define more uh, this structure, input domain characterization with more details in chapter 7. Graphs are discussed and uh, other and these other structures are defined in later chapters. So uh, we want to use formally uh, we want to define uh, uh, a practical uh, view of uh, coverage criteria and uh, we want to know how coverage criteria uh, could help help us uh, in uh, test design uh, activity. In this slide, uh, you see a, uh, an example, a simple uh, example uh, for defining coverage criteria. Suppose we have uh, a bag of uh, candy, a bag of these uh, jelly beans, and uh, we want to assess the quality quality uh, of these candies okay uh, the problem is uh, evaluate the quality of these uh, genetics and uh, we know that in our in the, our bag uh, we have uh, six flavors jelly beans which are uh, differentiated differentiated by four colors and this a set of all, all uh, flavors which our candies has uh, and uh, there are four colors which uh, our jelly beans uh, could be in as you know uh, there are couples of uh, jelly beans, there are couples of flavors with the same color. Uh, these two flavors, apricot and lemon, uh, are uh, both yellow, uh, both has yellow color. And uh, another couple, uh, cantaloupe and uh, tangerine, uh, tangerine uh, flavor has the same color uh, which is orange color so uh, to test to test uh, the quality of uh, this bag of uh, candies uh, how we select the candies to test them how what is the better what is the best method to test the quality of the uh, criteria that can be uh, the first criteria could be a floor okay uh, at the best statement we should uh, check each flavor once at least once this is the best 
uh, this could be a best practice to uh, test the quality of the bag and judge about the jelly beans uh, to uh, judge thoroughly to uh, test uh, to do appropriateness test we should test each uh, each flavors uh, at least once so the first coverage criteria could, could be the flavor but when we use the flavor uh, coverage criteria to test the quality of these the jelly beans uh, probably for some uh, flavors we should uh, test several instances of uh, jelly beans to check uh, appropriately because if uh, we want to test uh, these two flavors we should test several yellow jelly bean to detect uh, the fla flavor of them and uh, it's random random because we select from uh, yellow jelly beans and uh, I don't know uh, I could not know about the flavor of uh, them of it because uh, the only uh, external feature is the uh, its color and by the color we could not control we could not say about the flavor of each uh, yellow jelly bean because uh, both lemon flavor and apricot uh, flavor uh, has the same color so we could uh, say that this coverage criteria uh, is hard to control and the controllability of our testing method is hard by this coverage criteria because uh, we could not detect easily which yellow jelly bean has lemon flavor or which one has apricot so this is a good coverage criteria in the sense of to check the quality of uh, this bag of jelly beans thoroughly but its controllability is low because we could not test each floor easily sometimes it's random because uh, it may be uh, we check several uh, yellow jelly beans but all of them be lemon or uh, all of them may have apricot flavor this is true also for uh, these uh, couple of flavors this is true for orange color so the controllability of uh, flavor coverage criteria is low so uh, to test one jelly bean of each flavor we have this problem deciding if yellow jelly bean is lemon or apricot is a controllability problem because we cannot uh, deterministically choose one yellow jelly bean for apricot or one jelly bean for yellow it's random and maybe all of the yellow jelly beans test tested will be all uh, have a lemon flavor okay on the other hand we can use the color coverage criteria to check the quality of these jelly beans if uh, we use this uh, uh, 
this uh, coverage criteria this coverage criteria uh, has a, a full controllability because of, to testing each color we simply select uh, for German beans, each of them with a different color one black, one white, one uh, green, one blue excuse me, one yellow, one green, one orange and one white so uh, at least with uh, four tests we could uh, detect the quality of uh, these jelly beans but as you know we are not sure about their flavors we just check their colors the quality of the colors and you know uh, there are two flavors in the same uh, color this is true for two couples for yellow green and orange green so the color coverage criteria has full controllability but it's not uh, decide uh, if not uh, the quality of these jelly beans personally so uh, we should uh, use uh, appropriate criteria practice The appropriateness depends on uh, the program problem. In this problem, we should try to check each flower. If not possible, if not possible, we could use color. We could use color coverage criteria. So we define coverage criteria coverage uh, as defined in this box given a set of test requirements TR is our test requirements TR is our test requirements for some coverage criterion for a specific coverage criterion C as you know the coverage criterion defines our test requirement or our test requirements is defined by our coverage criterion a test set T that satisfies this coverage criterion a test set T satisfies uh, C coverage if and only if uh, for every test requirement TR be in capital T be in our test requirements or at least one test case T in our test set such that T satisfies T R what's the meaning of this definition this is a long definition for example, suppose uh, we have defined a flavor, flavor as coverage criterion. By this coverage criterion, we have six test requirements. So our test requirements, according to this, uh, to this criterion, are these six requirements so we say that a test set T the capital T cover this T 
test requirements if and only if each of these flavors are tested at least once. I are tested at least by testing a one jelly bean. Okay, so our test case, our test set should be included at least six jelly bean. Our test set probably have more than six jelly beans because this coverage criteria is not or could not be controllable. We could not select jelly bean easily from each flavor. So this could be a test coverage in the coverage criterion. The set is the set is our test requirements and to cover this all test requirements we should test each flavor jelly bean at least once. We should test, we should check at least one lemon, one pure and so on. Okay, so we come back to the definition. Given a set of test requirements such as TR could be flavors, the set of all flavors, six in this case. We have six test requirements in this case for coverage criteria C. Criterion C. Our criterion is flavor. A test case a test set T satisfies this coverage criteria if and only if for every test requirement, for every flavor in our flavors, in our possible flavor, in our flavor set, there is at least one jelly bean, one jelly bean, or at least one candy in our test case in our test set such that satisfy satisfies its flower our requirement flower we are required to test lemon once so our test set should be included at least by at least one lemon gelatin we require our test set uh, included, uh, included by at least one piece of cheese uh, flavor. So our test set T to cover this requirement, this requirement, this test requirement should be at, uh, included at least with one piece of cheese. Okay. Uh, this statement states that some test requirements could be infeasible. Some test requirements could be in uh, feasible because uh, there is not any test case. We cannot. We cannot find any test cases to. Uh, cover to satisfy uh, the test requirements. For example, uh, suppose in our uh, implementations, in our coding, we have some uh, piece of dead codes. The dead code could be the statements uh, that located after a return statement or a statement that be uh, preceded by uh, if condition uh, in which the condition uh, always be false and the if statement uh, could not be run at all. In this situation, we have dead code. The dead code 
uh, could not be run at all. Okay, so uh, test requirements uh, which are defined for this uh, piece of code, for the dead code, could not be satisfied at all because the control of execution could not reach these statements. So, in this case, we have no test case values. There is not, there are not test case, test case values that could meet the test requirements. So, uh, these test requirements are invisible requirements. Detection of invisible requirement, invis invisible test requirements is formally undecidable for most test criteria. Okay, it's undecidable. And we could not determine uh, which of our test requirements is our uh, feasible and which are not feasible simply to do this we should uh, run we should execute our program several times or hour for all possible inputs to determine uh, if it is feasible or not so we conclude that uh, full coverage or 100% coverage is impossible in practice because we may have some invisible test requirements and detection of them uh, is undecidable we cannot detect in physical test requirement in practice easily. So we we'll return back to our uh, jelly bean uh, example. Suppose we have uh, this test set. Uh, we ask this question, does the test set T1 satisfy the flavor criterion? Yes or no? Please tell me. Does the uh, test set T1 cover the flavor criterion? As you know, very first to our specification, you know that we have six flavors. We have six flavors and we check this set to, call, uh, to cover all of these uh, flavors. We know that uh, the lemon flavor uh, is tested three times with three test cases, three, with three uh, candies. Uh, the next one is tested by one test case uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the test case T1 covers all possible flavors, covers all test requirements. The whole set of our test requirements is these six flavors and as you know this test set this test set uh, has covered all uh, other flavors or possible flavors but what is the size of this test set how many test cases are run to cover the flavor criterion. 
how many test cases are used uh, to, uh, to uh, test the lemons uh, can be uh, three test cases are used three test cases are done and there are three four one for Christology and uh, there is two another test cases altogether in this line we have uh, three four and these two uh, the six test cases in this line and seven uh, eight and there is four uh, applicates so altogether we have one uh, 12 test cases yes uh, 12 test cases we have run 12 test cases to cover all six flower uh, requirements okay another question could be uh, this why uh, in this test set we uh, have used just one uh, test case for this flavor one for this pure and for one for this flavor for these three flavors we have used just one test case one but for uh, this uh, flavor and this flavor and this flavor we use a more than one uh, instances what is the cause of this happening this event because the testing of some the testing of these flavors lemon and apricot is not controllable both of them has the same color and we have, have to test yellow jelly beans until we uh, check the test both flavors so to do this in this test case three in this test set three lemons can be are tested and four applicate or tested this is the same for cantaloupe flavor these flavors are not controllable but you uh, as you have seen as you saw uh, to testing this uh, the pistachio flavor we uh, end up to uh, test just a green candy okay and for pure it's enough to, uh, to simply test a white candy these flavors are controllable but these two couple of flavors are not controllable so let's move ahead uh, there is another exa example uh, test set T2 T2 okay and uh, they ask uh, does test set T2, T2 satisfy the flavor criterion yes or no does it satisfy does it satisfy the flavor criterion simple it's very simple to as I said as I told you to cover flavor criterion we should test at least six instances of our 
type of candy. What in this test set? Just uh, we have tested one, two, three, four flavors, not six flavors. This set, uh, this test set does not satisfy the flavor criterion. But how about the color criterion? Does the set do satisfy the color criterion? Please tell me, please answer me. You have no any uh, contribution in our class, unfortunately. This is very simple, this question is very simple. You could uh, uh, check this test set with our uh, color, colors in previous slide. Uh, for example, uh, the lemon flavor you know is yellow, has yellow, the pistachio has green color, so far we have covered two green, the pure one uh, I guess it will be white and three tangerines. Tangerines, uh, I guess it's orange. Okay. Tangerine orange, pure. We have tested one pure candy, it's white, and uh, we test one pistachi. Uh, it's green and one lemon. And so, this test set, this test set, this test set color uh, or satisfy the color criterion. This is okay for color criterion, but it does not satisfy the flavor criterion because. It just covered four of six criteria, and the coverage le level is four over six. Four over six is uh, sixty-six percentage. Okay, but what about this test set? Does this test set cover the or satisfy the color criterion? This is very obvious, it's very simple. Does this test set? It's difficult. Why? Please uh, see uh, the video material of uh, Professor Jeff Afu. If you could not understand me, please refer to book and refer to the video material. Uh, he uh, talked about these uh, concepts very fluently and uh, uh, very simple for me. You can uh, study also the your textbook. This is very simple. Uh, please note. Please note that uh, if, uh, as you saw before, if we cover all uh, possible. We cover, we satisfy this coverage criteria and we also satisfy the color criteria because the uh, flavor, the set 
of all possible flavors uh, is bigger than the set of all colors and there are some flavors has the same color so if we uh, cover this test requirement actually we will cover this uh, uh, test requirement because if we taste all flavors actually we have tests all colors if we test all flavors actually we have tests we have test tested all color so we say that the flavor criterion subsume color criterion and if a test case satisfy this test requirement it also satisfies these test requirements because these test requirements these test requirements implicitly is a, a subset of these test requirements implicitly these test requirements this set of test requirements is a subset of this test requirement. If a test case uh, is if a test set satisfies these test requirements, it also satisfies each subset of each subset of this set. So it also satisfies this coverage criteria. And we say the flowers subsume colors coverage criteria, color coverage criteria. So by this explanation, we could say simply uh, we uh, could simply determine that T1 satisfies color color criteria because it satisfies a larger set of criteria such as flavor criteria okay because it tastes each color at least once if you check this test set with respect to this correspond to uh, with this uh, image with this description you could find out that it will simply cover all colors so the T1 cover or satisfy both flavor criterion and color criterion but the T2 uh, could satis satisfy just a color criterion because uh, each uh, color is tested by this test set at least once but this is not true for all flavors we have some flavors which are not covered by test kits for example we have not tested any candy with apricot flavor in this test set so this test set does not cover the apricot flavor it does not cover the uh, let me see P uh, no no it's pure lemon what flavor or what cover uh, is not covered by this test case the apricot flavor is not covered and the cantaloupe is not covered by this set so this test set does not satisfy the flavor picture, but it satisfies cover color criterion 
because each of these flavor has a separate uh, color in our four color in our set of colors we have four colors and all of them are tested by these tests okay so we define the coverage level as the ratio of excuse me we define the coverage level as the ratio of the number of test requirements satisfied by test set T to the size of T what's the coverage level of uh, this test set for uh, flavor criteria in this test set we just covers four flavors but we have six flavors in our test requirement set our test requirement set is defined here okay we have six test requirements but by the test set T2 T2 we just cover four of them four of them one lemon one pistachio one pear and one tangerine four of these six flavors are covered by this test set so the coverage level is the ratio of our test requirement with with which covered by our test set in this case the ratio is 4 over 6 and 4 over 6 is 66% we have covered 66% of our test requirements by this T2 T test but we have a full coverage or 100% coverage by this test set T1 because we have covered all possible flavors by this test set, by these test cases okay this has a coverage level 100% but this has 66% coverage level but for cover, uh, colors, both of these test sets have covered color criterion fully and 100%. So the ratio of the number of test requirements satisfied by test set T to the size of our test requirements. In the case of jelly bean, our test requirements has six test requirements and all test set has covered just four four of them four of six test requirements so we have the ratio four over six we have the coverage level four over six but uh, we want to talk about Uh, the ways of using how we can use uh, test criteria in test sets and uh, how we can use test criteria in software testing generally generally there are two ways to use test uh, criteria the first usage is uh, to use directly to generate test values for example if our coverage criteria be colors we simply use this coverage criteria to uh, define our test set 
as stated in our problem, in our question, we just uh, try to satisfy all colors. So these colors, these test requirements could be a guidance for me to detect what can these to be tested. Okay, as you know, by this set of test requirements, we should test one yellow jelly bean, one, one orange, and one white. Okay? So, this, this coverage criterion is the color criterion could be used directly to design our test cases, our instances, our test instances, our input values. Okay. There is, uh, this is one way of using test criteria. But, in uh, software testing uh, literature, there is another usage of uh, test criteria also. The other usage is uh, that, that when we generate test values externally, in other manners, such as in human based test design method in human based test design method we don't use any coverage criteria to uh, de determine to define our test cases so to check the quality of our test cases we could use some coverage criteria and measure the coverage ratio, the coverage level of our test set. So, uh, one usage of uh, test criteria is to evaluate the quality of our test set, of a predefined test set. And one usage is to use it directly in test value generation. Then we want to use uh, coverage criteria as this is. This uh, we often we use them in research uh, community. Uh, and uh, uh, it's most obvious way to use a uh, coverage criteria and it could be used in automated tools it's the basis it's a basis for uh, producing automated tools the automated tools to design uh, test cases just uses coverage criteria. So several test sets and we want to assess the quality of them uh, to determine which one uh, should be executed in actual environment. We can use coverage criteria to assess there's the coverage level of our test sets and uh, we can use uh, which one has the most uh, coverage level. So this uh, usage uh, usually uh, favored by industry, sometimes uh, misleading because uh, when we have uh, we have some invisible coverage, uh, excuse me, invisible 
test requirement, the coverage level automatically uh, would be low. And this could be misleading because we evaluate um, our test set, the test set low. Okay. Test criteria in uh, software testing literature sometimes called as metrics, as uh, test metrics. Uh, so as I defined in uh, this uh, slide, uh, the two usage uh, of test criteria, according to these talks, we have uh, two possibility. Uh, uh, to using uh, coverage criteria in generator and recognizers. A generator is a procedure that automatically generates values, test values, to satisfy a criterion, to satisfy a, a test requirements extracted by uh, some specific criterion. A specific criteria. Okay, this is the first usage of coverage criteria. For the first, uh, for the second usage in industry, we just use a, use a recognizer, which is a procedure that decides whether a given set of test values satisfies a criterion or not. Okay, but uh, there is an important point you should note that both of these problems, both of these uh, possibilities uh, are probably undecidable. because of infeasible test requirement, because of the existence, existence of infeasible test requirements. And because of the, uh, in the first case, because of the size of uh, the uh, space we should search to uh, cover our input space because the size of our input space sometimes uh, the size of our input space is very large and we could not generate any super test, uh, test case to cover some test criteria some uh, t test requirements so it's not decidable, decidable. Problem. Uh, let me, uh, we can finish uh, the session uh, and uh, I will summarize our talking uh, and you can uh, have uh, enough time to first and break. Uh, so, uh, in this session uh, we uh, cover just uh, the uh, part one of chapter five uh, and, uh, excuse me, uh, we have defined this uh, concept, uh, creature assumption. Uh, we have defined this by uh, the jelly bean uh, example. It says that a test case, a test criterion C1 could subsume, subsume te test criterion C2 if and only if every set of test cases that satisfy, uh, satisfy uh, criterion C1 
it also it also satisfies C2 as you saw in excuse me let me see as you saw this in this <coughs> slide then we have a test set that cover all flavors it also covers all colors so the flavor coverage criterion we say that the flavor coverage criterion subsumes the color coverage criterion because every test <coughs> excuse me every test set every test set that covers these flavors it also covers these colors so this coverage criterion <coughs> subsumes subsumes this coverage criterion so uh, this concept and uh, explain its example in relevant slide and there is no new slide uh, and uh, there is some advantages about coverage criteria they are also uh, told uh, taught about them in chapter two and, the, and there is no new uh, concept in this uh, slide again you can study this uh, this slide and uh, there are some characteristics about uh, coverage uh, various coverage criteria uh, we say uh, a good coverage criteria should uh, be fairly easy to compute test requirement for example if we uh, define uh, our coverage criteria as for example each pair coverage in uh, the example of chapter 2 we should uh, simply uh, we should be able to simply define all uh, each pair could be extracted from a control program. Uh, if uh, we say the flavor, the uh, a, a test criteria, a coverage criteria in jelly bean example, we should uh, be able uh, to easily define all flavors. Okay. So the first characteristic uh, characteristics of uh, characteristic of a good coverage criteria is it is that it should be fairly easy to compute uh, test requirements automatically, and uh, the second one say that it should be efficient to generate test values. As uh, you saw in uh, our Jellybean. Uh, case the color coverage criteria is a good coverage criteria in sense of this characteristic because we want to test for different colors just for different colors and it is easy, uh, easy to generate or uh, generate or uh, detect the instances to be tested because uh, we simply see the color of uh, candy and select each of one color okay it should be controllable in other words we say to this uh, character uh, this character uh, characteristic as uh, the controllability of the coverage criteria and the resulting tests should reveal as many faults as possible so in this uh, course we look for coverage criteria we look for some coverage criteria that have these characteristics but uh, 
uh, it's not uh, very obvious it's not possible in all cases it's a uh, difficult in some cases to determine which character which criteria is the best one and we should uh, study and simulate the system and test uh, several times the subsumption uh, concept is defined for you and there is no new concept new uh, other concept in this uh, slide so uh, we reach to uh, slide uh, 16 uh, and this is enough for uh, today uh, please uh, ask your questions if you have any question if you have no question let me I guess um, there is one okay Uh, so let me finish this uh, meeting I appreciate you uh, for your attention and uh, I hope you have a good day uh, until the next meeting uh, goodbye